Hey! You're watching part 4 of a series on HTML and CSS for beginners. In this video, we're going to see how to make our text bold and italic, as well as how we can add comments to our code that the browsers won't read. So as you can see on the screen, I've already gone ahead and uh, added a bit of content here just to add a few paragraphs of text. So to make bold text and italic text, uh, sadly, it's not like our paragraphs with a P and headings or with H tags. Um, they made it a little bit different. And it's because we, it's not necessarily about making things bold or italic, but it's about putting more emphasis and, and more importance on our text. So what I'm going to do is I want to make this first sentence here. Uh, so the first sentence right here, bold. And to do that, you want to use something called a strong tag. And then I'm going to come all the way to here, and I have to close my strong tag. I'm going to save this, and we'll refresh. And there you can go. You can see that everything has become bold that was inside my strong tag. So just to do that again, we'll do it on the last sentence in this paragraph. Strong. And then I come all the way over here. Close strong. And let's refresh. And now you can see this has also become strong or bold. Uh, just to show you why it's important to close your strong tag, if ever you forgot to close your strong tag, everything becomes bold. It's not going to end at the end of this paragraph. It just keeps going until the end of your document. So make sure you close your strong tags. And that should be a close forward slash. There we go. So let's come down to our second paragraph now and look at italic text. So just like the strong tag, we're making our text stronger. We're making, putting, you know, it's bigger, it's more important. Italic text, the whole idea behind italic is we put emphasis on our text. So what we use for that is an EM tag, and that stands for emphasis. So let's just do this whole first sentence. Close EM, save that, and refresh. And we can see here that it's become italic. Let me just zoom in a bit on the screen. So we can see our text has become italic there. Now, we're just learning HTML and CSS. So maybe you'd look at this later and go, oh man, I forget what the EM stands for. So let's look at doing uh, what we, an HTML comment. So I'm just going to come up here in this empty space here. And I'm going to put in a triangle bracket, exclamation mark, hyphen, hyphen. And you can see everything after that now is becoming gray. And this is an HTML comment hyphen hyphen, close triangle bracket. And th what that's doing is it's uh, closing my comment. So it's not like a regular thing. We have to tell it that it's a comment. So it's not just with my greater than and less than symbols or my triangle brackets. It's using uh, this is telling it that it's the start of a comment. And this is telling it it's the end of a comment. And if I save my document and I refresh, we won't see any differences here. The comments are just notes to yourself or other people who are reading your code. So what you could do is you could say in here, EM stands for emphasis. This makes my text italic. And up here, we could put in another one. Strong makes my text, whoops makes my text bold. And there we go. The uh, thing that's important, we want to put a space here and here. It will still work if you do that, but it's possible you run into some issues uh, depending on what symbols you have at the end. So always just do your uh, opening. We do our exclamation mark, hyphen, hyphen, put in all of our comment, uh, sorry, put in a space, put in your comment space and then put in the two hyphens and the triangle bracket there. Again, I'm going to save my document and refresh. And again, you can see that there's no change there. Another thing you can do uh, if you want bold italic text is you can put in M and I can come here and do a close M. Save that and refresh and you can see that it becomes bold italic. Now, of course, I don't need all of my text to be strong and bold. I could take this M tag here and maybe only make these last two words. So all of this is bold. Then this is bold and italic. And then we close it all off. So it's regular bold. Then I have my bold italic and they both close right there. And then if I needed to, I could come down here and put in another strong tag. And I could close strong. And then over here, I could come and put another M tag. And I could close M, save. So there's my bold text. 
over here is my next italic text, and so on and so forth. Just as a quick side note, uh, if you're looking online for some tutorials and stuff, you might see something called a B tag. Close B, and let's do this, this next word here, I, and I'll close my I over here. I'll save that, and you'll notice that um, it's actually working. So this word here is right there, it's bold, and this here is my italic text here. B and I are obviously much faster to write and easier to do. The problem is they have no meaning behind them. It's a visual representation of bold and italic, but it doesn't actually add importance to your text. And this is important. These days, one of the things we have to worry about with web design is accessibility. There's going to be people who are visiting your website that can't see the screen very well. They might have something called a screen reader that which reads the website to them. And this takes strong and M into importance for putting more importance and emphasis on our text. Whereas the B and I tags don't add any importance to the text. It's a visual representation, but it doesn't do it doesn't actually add meaning to our text. Just like in H1, it actually adds meaning. It's telling the browser that this is a title. It's not just making it bigger. It's it's giving it real meaning. The strong and the M tags give things real meaning. Let's add another little comment here, just as a reminder to yourself, do not use B and I. They're not what we want to be using. So they're actually used for a few other things now, for little hacks that you might find, and you might see those later on as you explore web development a bit more. But for the most part, we just pretend they don't exist. Strong. M, that's the right way to go. So thanks so much for watching up until now. I really hope you like this video. If you have any comments, any questions, leave them down below in the comment section. And next video, we're gonna be looking at links. We're actually gonna add some interactivity to our site by linking to other pages. And that should be a lot of fun. I look forward to seeing you there. 